And up to two million people lined the Boston waterfront for today's glorious events. As for us, we've been here on the Discovery, next to the New England Aquarium all day, to watch the great spectacle, one of the largest flotillas of tall ships to come to the United States since the bicentennial. As Boston crawled back into the lap of her history, the tradition of 350 years of going to sea sailed through a harbor that no longer has the size nor the importance it once did. Old Ironsides, the Bark Eagle, remnants of two wars, cutting the water ahead of a flotilla of sailing vessels, 70 of them at least, worth writing home about. And write home we will. It was a day and a sight to be remembered. That in a year of such sights that began for tradition-conscious Bostonians when Yastrzemski hit that number 3,000, that continued through the papal visit and the Kennedy Library opening, and will continue through a summer of celebration. Of course, today is more than just a parade of tall ships. It is that, and that was a spectacular parade indeed. But it also was a gathering, a happening, a chance for hundreds of thousands of people to come out under this warm sun and celebrate Boston's birthday. If today was not carnival, then it was Woodstock on the waterfront. Estimates of the crowds vary from half a million to two million. Bigger crowds, we are told, than Op Sales 76, than Arthur Fiedler in 76, than Pope John Paul II in 79. Hundreds of thousands of people lined up to see what is left of the world of sail. 50,000 alone on Castle Island. The people were out grabbing at views, finding their windows, their ledges, their mounds, their friends with a better view. For each of them, a t-shirt, a commemorative glass, a balloon, an ice cream sandwich, a beer, or a story. Hopefully, maybe the city will get us act together. You know? Maybe this sort of thing helps? Oh, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen no trouble at all. Everybody's having a good time. That's what I like. The ships move so nicely. I like that. There's a lot of people out here, a lot of things to see. They're big, I'll tell you that much. They're big? <laughs> Anything else? Well, I heard that some are from other countries. That's pretty good. It's, it's real hard to ex describe because, well, you think of them as being so big and them compared to the JFK, they're just, uh, you know, they're real small. Would you like to be aboard one of them? No. You just want to get a closer look, right? Yeah. Jerry, even as Operation Sail was underway, Operation Public Safety was gearing up, too, for a wave of spectators. The Emergency Medical Communications Network at police headquarters was fully staffed and could monitor some 14 city ambulance at satellite locations. In addition, 25 volunteer ham radio operators set up two-way communications with five Red Cross emergency aid stations at the Army Base Pier. Eight additional units were set up along the area. They treated some 300 persons for minor cuts and lacerations. The city also contracted 14 private ambulance companies as backup. So in the immediate viewing area of the ships, about 150 medical personnel were on hand. Meanwhile, about 500 military personnel worked along with Boston and MDC police on traffic and crowd control. At 4 p.m., the Department of Health and Hospitals had treated 53 persons for heart attacks and seizures. The MBTA estimated the commuter crowd at over one million, making it the biggest day ever. There was a minor platform fire at the Dover Street station that disrupted service for about 45 minutes. There were no serious injuries reported. The damage was estimated at $1,000. Fire officials believe the careless disposal of a cigarette caused that fire. But overall, it was a peaceful day for those involved in public safety. The public was served well. This was probably not the biggest day to conduct business in Boston. As the tall ships got closer, more and more desks became empty. Any window with a good view of the harbor was packed, as a lot of companies let employees invite family and guests to watch. We got a memo saying that, you know, from 10 to 2, we can watch the tall ships. So we kind of just moved away from the desks and came right out here. <laughs> Some careful planning obviously went into today. After all, you have to do something while you wait for the next ship to go by. Slowly, they appear. I like that white, white, uh, with the red stripe going down it. That's a, it's a nice book, and all the cells up. But those on the top floors of tall buildings did have to depend on such things as telescopes, binoculars, and cameras. You might be able to sell your pictures. <laughs> I'm getting that one again. I got the one of the aircraft carrier. I got the um, eagle, and I got another one that came in first. And I got that one right there. And luckily, I'm using 400 film. As part of the view from here, people could see the area where some of the tall ships will be docking. Shelby Scott has more on that.
quite a sight here at the South Boston Army Base Pier where most of the tall ships put in. As the leaders of the parade came in to tie up, those still under sail went by off the stern. But even when the sails came down, the festivities continued. The U.S. Coast Guard Band welcomed the early arrivals with, appropriately enough, hands across the sea. Off-sail volunteers were on hand to catch lines and generally help out. And for each ship and crew, a welcoming salute from the Continental Navy of Newburyport. When the crews finally had a chance to rest, I asked some of the young cadets aboard Norway's Christian Radic what the parade was like for them. It's hard work. Lots of sail maneuvers. It's real nice sand. There's so many people around, you know. I think there, someone says there's going to be about two million people here. That's half of Norway's population. What about all the people watching all you people come by today? But did, did, did that give you any sense of anything, any feeling? I knew they were all, uh, be, were all there to look for me. It's a great feeling that you're one of the tall ships and, and you see all the other tall ships like Gorsk, Falk and Denmark. And you only see them in pictures, but you've never seen them real. The tall ships at Dockside, another spectacular sight in what has turned out to be a very impressive day.